Morning, everyone. It's uh, 8.38 on Wednesday, the last day of October. And this is your pre-opening comment. It is video number 1560. Okay, so um, Asia is up. Europe is up a little. And our futures have gone from at 7 o'clock uh, up 22 in the Dow, up 40 in the NASDAQ, and up 8 in the uh, S&P, have gotten up to up 35 in the Dow, up 54 in the uh, NAS, and up 11. Those were on the earlier numbers. The ADP numbers came out. And right now, the Dow is down 10. NASDAQ is up 19, and the S&P is up $2. So um, things have been all over the place, but not in any kind of extreme way. Okay, the numbers. Um, mortgage apps down, of course. Uh, what was interesting there is that new purchases were actually up 4%, but refis were down 13%, which makes some sense here in uh, this kind of a structured way. Uh, the ADP numbers up 127,000 versus last month's up uh, uh, 190,000. Um, pay was up uh, 7.6 for people who kept their jobs and up 15.1 for people who got new jobs. Um, the uh, GDP number, second look, third quarter, up 2.6 versus the first look of up 2.9. Prices up 4.3 versus 4.1. So, you know, what we're looking at there is while the market is slowing down on those numbers, consumption, etc., cetera, um, not slowing down a lot. And, um, I'm going to guess that kind of sets up the Fed for a mistake. Okay, uh, last night's earnings, uh, CrowdStrike, which was uh, actually down um, in the neighborhood of, uh, let's see, 114, currently trading 114, down 24. Intuit which uh, was 178, has fallen a little further um, to 172. Workday is pretty much right where it was, 157 down 13 and a half. New numbers, um, NetApp, N-T-A-P, with a miss on revenues and a beat on profits. I know you're getting tired of hearing it, but that's an easily manipulated issue on earnings. You can't do that with revenues. And so what we have there is, um, you know, revenue missed. And so we work lower. Um, this morning, we had earnings from, oh, by the way, NetTap was uh, 64.01 down 7.78, down 10% on that uh, earnings beat with negative guidance. Hormel, which you would think is a little bit more stable, part of uh, my um, food supply chain sector, same situation as NetEase. Beat. On earnings, missed on revenue. 44.77 down 3.42 or 7.1%. So uh, there you have it. Uh, trade deficit, 99 billion, no big surprise there. Um, and uh, spending down two tenths of a percent. Um, I want to mention two things here. Uh, the first is everybody. Uh, all of the information this morning and all of the news surrounds Powell. Powell's going to speak. 
Uh, I think that's at 1 or 1.30 at uh, the Brookings Institute. And on the basis of these numbers and what the other Fed speakers have been talking about, I'm going to guess he's going to be uber uh, hawkish. And I think that that's going to hurt. The reason that I'm concerned about that is because the gold looked like it was uh, breaking out, uh, possibly. And uh, right now, it's up. Let's take a quick look here. Uh, it was up. Now it's only up seven. It was actually uh, up about 14 not very long ago. These tables are not correct. It shows the high as 1771, uh, but I will show you on the actual chart. There seems to be a disconnect. It actually was uh, 1780, 1779. So, uh, you know, it looks like it really wants to break out, but it's still under this flattening 200-day uh, MA. And uh, if we get an ugly reading, I'm going to guess it's going to reverse to the downside and possibly pretty strongly, maybe down to that, uh, you know, 1730, 1740 area. Uh, the MACD is in fact rolling over also. So the gold is up four tenths of a percent and the silver is uh, up, I believe, about three times that. Let's take a quick look. Uh, the silver is up 51 cents. Yeah, that's a big move in the silver. The silver is up 2.4 percent. Same basic thing, except that it's riding this 20-day moving average and, in point of fact, is closer to the high and a breakout. Um, I'm going to say that's going to be a problem, too. I'd really like to be long it, but uh, I just don't see the potential in taking that risk. Um, two more things. Ed Yardini. Yardini. Sorry. Sorry. Um, he's talking, he made a statement this morning about this market setup, this time being different. Ed, get a clue. You're not that young that you don't remember that it's never different. And so I leave it at that. Um, another thing that I'm going to mention here, and it's editorializing just a shade, and that is that... Um, we have the uh, uh, the Biden administration guy come on, be interviewed, and he's talking about there being no purchases for SPR until late 2023 to 2024. And I want to remind everyone about something. Uh, Biden keeps on saying he's going to shut down drilling. You know, that's fine for him to talk uh, for the benefit of the uh, New Green Deal people. But the fact is, they're wrong. Flat out wrong. Um, I don't say it that often, but the stupidity of uh, cutting down drilling because you're looking at... Um, you know, the issues of environment and kowtowing to the extreme progressives. Let me remind everyone about something. There are two reasons for wars, religion and oil. Now, religion we can't do anything about because religions in general, and everybody should have, you know, their own free choice, but religions tend to be pretty black and white. Um, you know, there's not going to be any change in the way that people look at their and other religions. Oil, on the other hand, is a real issue. Um, you know, there are many people who say oil, is, war is generally about oil um, and its availability. Well, you know, I don't care how many people or how many states go with, we're going to be all electric, we're not going to sell anything but electric by 2030 or 2040. That does not take into consideration the fleet of cars that are internal combustion 
and are going to stay that way. Everybody can't afford 40, 60, $100,000 for an electric car. So it's not going to happen anytime soon. And to have such a negative bent on drilling, I mean, you know, they're saying um, the problem, we're going to get you with windfall tax profits, uh, windfall profits tax at the same time that they're telling you not to be bothering with uh, making capital investments because we're not going to let you really make any money on those investments. You know, it's just the way it is. Okay, uh, oil up two and a half dollars, back over 80. Uh, gold, as I said, up nine after being up 18. Uh, silver up 60 and coming on a little bit. Uh, up a dime in the uh, copper, which I really like also. Uh, coffee down 40 cents, 45 cents after yesterday's up $6. And this is also wrong. It shows the high of 169.50 when the actual chart shows that it was over 170. I mean, I'm not nitpicking for pennies here, uh, but it was 170.55. Um, you know, we really need to get above these closes. I'd really like to see a close above uh, 170, 145, but it may take a couple of days and, you know, we have a profitable position. All right, everyone, that's the story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Be careful out there. And at 130, you can expect a downdraft unless Powell specifically goes against everything that's been said by his minions about being concerned about inflation and not 